Hello YouTubers, shooters, reloaders, bullet casters, and anyone else that might be watching this video tonight. Flyer 556 coming to you from the homestead here in New Jersey tonight. And um, tonight's video is going to be on frequently asked questions and comments. A um, couple things I want to explain first about why I haven't answered any and how I'm going to answer them going forward. And um, most of all, I want to thank everybody for participating in my channel, watching my videos, listening to me talk about guns and ammo and reloading and lead and shooting stuff and blowing stuff up and all the good stuff. Anyhow, a lot of you guys have left me comments and asked me questions and I haven't answered them. And it's not that I don't want to put the time or I don't want to answer them. I do want to answer them. I do put the time. I do read every single one. And um, the reason I haven't, let me just get right to the point, is because of Google. Google. And I'm sure you guys are aware of why I haven't answered them. And if not, I'm going to explain why. And I'm going to answer them right now. Um, the reason is, when you answer comments on your YouTube channel, Google wants you to, like, connect your channel with your Google username, which is my personal name. And when you do that, it changes your YouTube channel name, which mine would be Flyer556, from Flyer556 to my personal full name, which is what my Google account is under. I don't want to do that. Um, furthermore, I'm not interested in who's following who. Um, I, I could care less about the circles. I could care less about the squares. I could care less about any of this. And I've, I've watched a lot of videos on this and people are upset about the fact that you got to do this and I'm seeing more and more of the reason people answer the comments and stuff on a video like I'm going to do tonight because there just isn't any way around it and I'm not going to give in and I'm, I'm not a follower. I don't care who's following who, who's interested in whose circle, square, or, or whatever you want to call it. I'm just not interested in it. So. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to answer whatever I can tonight the best I can. And going forward from now on, I'm going to start taking notes of whatever comments I receive. And this is how I'm going to answer them. Okay? So first and most of all, I want to thank everybody for your participation. And you're putting your time to view my videos and listen to me. And um, I just want to thank everybody for that. You guys are the main reason that I do this. I don't do it for myself, I do it for you to try to help educate people from my experiences and the knowledge that I've gained over the years doing this and um, hopefully it helps a lot of you. And um, really that's it. So I'm going to get started here with the most recent, I guess I'll go from the most recent um, topics that I wrote down to, the, to the, the least recent and then going forward I'll just make a video every month or every couple of months and I'll answer questions and comments and um, you guys will know why I'm doing it this way because I'm just not going to answer it and I'm not going to incorporate my YouTube channel with my Google account. I'm just not interested in none of the circle squares following this, following that. I don't want nothing to do with it. So here we go. I'm going to start with Bob Wilson. Um, he made a comment about the compound video I made. He said, it sure does look like I did a lot of work over the last 20 years. Yes, I did. Um, that place, when I got it, uh, sometime around 88, um, it was heavily wooded. It looked like everything around what I cleared out. Um, I did all the tree removal. I did the driveway. I built the sheds. I put the trailer there. I planted the grass, all the wood that you see all over the place up there, that's from me cutting the trees down over the years. A lot of it's rotting away and falling down, I need to get rid of it. I'm probably going to give a lot of it away. Um, but yeah, a lot of years of hard back breaking work and um, it is what it is. But now it's a cool place to shoot, make videos, get away, uh, be in that relaxing atmosphere away from the rat race that I live in from day to day life here in New Jersey. and. Um, that's that. So yes, it was a lot of work and um, again, thanks for your participation, Bob. Moving on. A um, couple of comments about my 1894. 
that was from Carlos Bright is one of them from Austin, Texas, and Raymond Munez, or Munaz, whichever it is, um, excuse the pronunciation there. Um, Carlos Bright asked me a couple questions about the gun and uh, what I paid and stuff. I paid six fifty before tax and nicks. Um, I am happy with it now that I've shot it. It's cool. Um, it is what it is. It, there's only one downside to the gun that I don't like. I found that it'll only feed round nose flat point bullets. Um, it will not feed semi wad cutter because they have a shoulder on the side right above the case mouth. It will not feed round nose, which you really shouldn't shoot round nose in a tubular magazine anyhow. But I tried it just to see what it would shoot, what it would feed, what it wouldn't feed. And what I came up with is it will only feed round nose flat point bullets because the chamber has an extremely sharp edge where the bullet enters the chamber. And as it comes up the feed ramp and hits it, anything with a shoulder or without a good crimp catches that sharp edge on the chamber, the edge of the barrel, and it just won't chamber. Whereas the round nose flat point, even some hollow points, they will because it's more or less a round nose flat point with a hollow point. They'll go in and they'll feed and function because they got a crimp and there's no shoulder and they just kind of ride right into the chamber. Um, that's one of my negatives to the 1894-44 mag. Otherwise, I'm good with it. The price is good for what I paid. Um, the next question is Raymond's question. Um, he asked me which one do I recommend, the 44 or the 357. Now, I got a good answer for that question now. I'm glad I waited on this comment because I got more information now than I would have had if I would have answered it right away. Um, which one? It really doesn't matter. It's your preference. They're both. One is just as good as the other. However, I feel you're probably going to have that same issue with the feeding, where no matter which one you get, if you go with the Marlin, it's probably only going to feed the round nose flat point, because both of the ones that I have, which are in the video of the 1894 Marlin, um, they both have the same problem. That's all they'll feed. Now, what I want to add to that is I actually went to purchase the 357 version this weekend. Well, this past weekend and everybody had it in stock when I bought the 44. It wasn't an issue to find. For some reason Marlin must have done a run on them and then all the gun stores sold them out because I couldn't find one nowhere. I called everybody in three different states in my area here and nobody, none of my local dealers had one. So I started looking at the Henry because as you guys know I recently purchased a Golden Boy. I did a few videos with that and I'm happy with it. So I really didn't want to spend all that money because the the big boy in 357, it, it's a couple hundred dollars more. It was 800 bucks. A lot of places it's 850. I paid 800. Um, however, I wanted the gun. I couldn't find the Marlin in 357. I would have bought it if I could have found it, and I would have just loaded around those flat points for that gun, and I would have been fine with it. Um, however, I couldn't find it. I bought the Henry. I spent the extra 150 dollars, and um, I'm really glad I did. Um, because of a few reasons. One, I feel it's a more well-made, a better made gun. It's just got a, a lot more craftsmanship that went into it. The fit and finish is just second to none. It's perfect. Everything is just perfect. The barrel, the wood, the fit of the metal to the wood, the function, everything. And that's what I want to explain here. For that extra 150 bucks that I spent, I feel I got a better gun. I got the octangular barrel, which I really do like. I like that on the Golden Boy also. And I brought it to the range the day I bought it, straight from the gun store to the range. I ran a boar snake through it and went right to the range. I brought with me every kind of ammunition I load for 357 and for 44. And um, I found it fed everything I put in it. I ran wad cutter 38s in it. I ran semi wad cutter 38s in it. I ran round nose flat point in it. I ran hollow point in it. It fed everything. Then I started, and that was in copper and lead. And then I started on the 357. Uh, almost the same amount of stuff I ran through it. Round nose. I ran semi wad cutter. I ran hollow point. 
and I ran all those in copper and lead and it fed everything issue free it doesn't complain about anything you put in it you, as we all know you really shouldn't run round nose in a tubular magazine because you don't want the point to the primer I did it just to see if it would function with that shoulder it ate everything I put in it everything issue free um, and Carlo by the way you, you spent a lot of money for that gun I see 1150 I, I guess Aust means Austin Texas um, maybe they go for a little more money out there Anyway, if you stick to the round nose flat point, you should be happy with the gun, and uh, you shouldn't really have any issues. Um, and Raymond, as far as the 44 to 357, either one, it doesn't matter. They're both good, but you're probably going to be limited to what you can shoot in it. So consider the Henry. That's my advice. Okay, moving on. Uh, Redneck Bobby, he's the next candidate. Got a comment on my range officer, he said he had one, he really liked it, he sold it. Oh, okay. What he said, he, he didn't say he liked it so much, he said he really liked my python. Um, I get a lot of that. A lot of people do like the python, I mean, it's a gorgeous gun. Um, it is what it is. However, he said he sold his range officer, he liked the range officer, but he had a chance to buy a 1980 python, so he let the range officer go and he went after that python. I hope you got it, Redneck Bobby. Moving on, snap cap, um, Jason Thomas, comment on the snap cap. He wants to know if you can use the video I made on 22 snap caps, the affordable 22 snap caps. I use those uh, drywall anchors in place of the snap caps because the snap caps, I explained in the video, they're rather expensive. They're like 10 bucks for like eight or 10 of them. They're almost a buck a piece, whereas the drywall anchors are plastic. You go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, any hardware store, the yellow ones. I don't remember what the number is, so I'm not going to say. <clears throat> but the yellow ones are the ones that you want. They fit the chamber perfect for a 22, And that allows you to drop the hammer on your 22 without having the firing pin dent or chip or do anything to the chamber face where it hits. Um, such as on a bolt action or a semi-auto or whatever you have, you can go ahead, put that in there, drop the hammer, and you don't have to worry about damaging your barrel. Um, he wanted to know if they would work on a Colt Gold Cup. I really don't know of them making a Colt Gold Cup in 22 LR, but if they do, sure they will. Absolutely they will. They'll work on anything. Um, but with a Colt Gold Cup, you could just, you know, hold the hammer and drop the hammer and gently and you don't have to have it slam into the chamber. Um, but if that answers your question, absolutely. If you want to put one in the barrel just as a safety precaution so nothing touches the cylinder or the, or the, um, the face of the chamber, absolutely. Put it in there, go ahead and drop the hammer. Moving on. My 45 Colt video. Um, question from John Murphy. He wants to know what the song is in the beginning of my Colt 45 video where I explain the difference between a Series 70 and a Series 80. Anyway, to sum it up, simple answer to the question, the song that's in the beginning of the video is called the Love Song, L-O-V-E -E Song, that's by Tesla, T-E-S-L-A, that's the Love Song by Tesla. Uh, let's see, moving on here. Oh. Uh, a couple people, what a beauty, what a nice gun. Of course, that's on the Python. Everybody likes the Python. Yeah, I do too. No argument there. Um, one more person made a comment about the name that I called the town where, where Remington took the Marlin Company. And again, in the 1894 video, going back to that, there's another comment here. Um, as you all know, Marlin was in North Haven, Connecticut. That's North Haven, not New Haven. North Haven, Connecticut, and then Remington acquired it in 2008, and they didn't bring the workers with them like I explained in the video, and they moved to Ilian, New York. In my video, I, I mispronounced that word. Um, I really didn't know how to pronounce it at the time when I made the video. I called it I Lion because that's the way it's written. It's written I-L-I-O-N. It looks like I Lion, New York on the barrel of the gun, on the new one that I have because that's out of there, because it was made and purchased, you know, this year. Anyhow, it's pronounced Illy in New York. The Marlin Company originated in North Haven, Connecticut, and when Remington took it over, they moved production up to Illy in New York. Um, 
that's that's pretty much it. That's really all I wanted to answer. The main thing I wanted to do was explain to you guys um, why I haven't answered the comments, and that's why. It's just a circle square thing linking the account. I don't want the account linked. And I'm not going to keep explaining it about the circles and the squares and the followers and then this and that. I want YouTube to be YouTube, Google to be Google, and I like it that way. And I'm sure a lot of other people feel the same way I do, and um, really that's it. And once again, most importantly, the reason I do this, 100% the reason I do this, is because of all of you and your participation, your time, watching my videos, listening to me talk like you're doing right now, showing interest in my channel, me, and uh, showing interest just in the gun community itself. That's great. And I want to thank everybody for that, and uh, I hope you'll continue to watch my channel and my videos. I got a lot of good stuff coming down the, down the pipe, and uh, I'm going to be doing a few more shooting videos at the compound coming up, 4th of July. I don't know exactly what I got in store or what I'm going to bring, but that'll be coming next month, in the beginning of the month, and uh, whatever happens between then and now will happen, and... I mainly just wanted to get this up there and explain to you guys I'm not ignoring you. I thank you very much for putting the time and the participation that you put and uh, sharing and a, a lot of people starting to subscribe. I want to thank everybody for that. Pretty much that sums it up. Um, that's it for my frequently asked questions and comments video tonight. Again, everybody, thank you very much. Please keep subscribing, sharing all that good stuff, and uh, thanks again everybody, Flyer 556, I'm out.